Hello there. Here's some news. We did it! Wait, hold on. We did it, you guys! We made it to the 100th episode, some more news special. Also, the president incited an unsuccessful insurrection on the United States Capitol, resulting in several deaths. And sure, that's noteworthy as well. We'll get to it, but 100 episodes. Wowee, right? Am I right? Do we have a celebratory graphic? Yeah, okay, well, we kind of spent all the money on that puppet and the movie. Macaulay Culkin cost us like 10 grand. Not as like a fee, he just, Totaled my car. Anyway, just because we're on a budget doesn't mean we can't have a whole other special. You know, while the country falls apart, again, still. Just a series of specials and stunts and never-ending episodes about national disasters, impeachment, second impeachment, treason, etc. But then another special and another special, round and round we go, like a purgatorial carnival ride. All that fun. That's why, to celebrate 100 of these, I'm going to eat 100 uncooked eggs. Is this really what we agreed upon? Like, shells and everything. Can't we do like a Star Wars thing or? Cody, hey, what's up? You gonna eat those eggs or not? No, I'll, I, I guess I'm just wondering if this is gonna, are we sure this is safe? I mean, if we're doing it, then it's safe, right? Wasn't this whole thing your idea? It certainly wasn't my idea. Yeah, well, we already had the eggs and I couldn't get anything else, so what do you- We already had the eggs? Listen, man, do it or don't. I don't care, but 100 episodes kind of feels like something we should celebrate. By eating eggs? Yes, absolutely. People celebrate with eggs all the time. You, you know, like um, like a birthday egg or um, like funeral quiches. I don't know, whatever, man. Just eat the eggs, okay? Egg boy, bye. Okay. You know what? Why don't we just do the news, you know? 100 is, it's just, it's just a number. And no better way to celebrate than just keep on keeping on with boring old regular news. That's right. Okay, everything is out of control. Also, we still have presidents? I thought we, I thought we nipped that in the bud. But hey folks, there's, there's a lot to talk about. There's like ending of seven levels of unpacking that needs to be done. And it certainly won't be done in this video. And in the time it took to film and edit this, we might not even have a country or maybe we'll have two countries or like a super country where we all get laser eyes, but water is money. But anyway, the point is we're trying our best. And at least at the moment, it appears that there won't be a uh, government overthrow and therefore not a complete fascist in the White House for now. You know, we've swept all the earwigs from the bathroom, ignored the nests and the state of the mess that caused this allegorical infestation in the first place, and now we can declare ourselves bug free. And why not use our 100th episode to celebrate that? That empty election victory that included the almost former president calling for an overthrow of the government after he lost the election. Just a, a little, a little oopsie coopsie, coozy coopsie. Anyway, oh boy, are the GOP super shocked about the whole sedition thing, aren't they? Uh, the first thing that stands out to me is how embarrassed and disgusted I am that the United States Capitol could be taken over by domestic terrorists while we're in session, transferring power from one president to the other, that a band of people who are terrorists, not patriots, literally occupied the floor of the House, drove the Senate out of its chamber. And the question for the country is how could that happen 20 years after 9-11? Lindsey Graham, the guy who backed Trump's false claims of election fraud, shocked. Ted Cruz, the guy who actively alleged voter fraud despite there being no evidence of it, shocked. Trump's own White House staff, shocked. It kind of makes you wonder where they were for the past four years, how they appear to be, uh, just tuning in. Well, no matter, Republican lawmakers watching this video right now, while we can't keep up with what's happening right this moment, we might as well use our 100th episode to remind you of everything that got us here. Perhaps get us all on the same page. And for the people who were actually paying attention, maybe this can be therapeutic. We can be like 
thankful. It's technically behind us, sort of, not really. Like, if they actually go after Trump, which is the best case scenario, that means there will be a year-long trial filled with protests and dumb lies and likely violence and terrible grifter takes and Twitter. Oh, the Twitter. But again, technically speaking, we're done. We're done with the earwig for now. Aren't you happy? So let's do it. Let's actually sit down and go through everything bad Donald Trump has done to the country since he became the president. You know, the stuff the GOP apparently missed until the last two weeks he's the president. So we could afford that graphic, but not a title for the special? Yeah, we've had that one on standby since he got COVID. Ah. Uh. So, uh, what's the status with the egg eating? Uh, working up to it. We got a whole treason to talk about. But first, how does one start when chronicling the thousand-year saga of the formerly of Twitter crime president, loser who lost? Probably with the lies, right? Remember how he's a liar who lied all the time? And not just the regular lies a president would make, because they're all liars. But, like... Really insidious and weird lies, in really obvious ways. Lies that were somehow way bolder than the other liar presidents. Lies that, in the end, resulted in the deaths of a lot of Americans from a virus and also a f***ing insurrection on the U.S. Capitol and all the future deaths we've yet to see. Stay tuned for all the future deaths, folks. It's so many lies that there's an entire database keeping track of the recorded 26,548 lies that Trump has made. That's an average of 12 lies a day, meaning that between us writing this and recording and editing the episode, he probably made another 100 plus lies. Meaning that if you sat down and watched the 1997 thriller The Game, Trump will have lied at least once by the time you get to the thrilling and yet oddly low stakes twist ending that I won't spoil in case you haven't seen the 1997 thriller The Game. Just trying to put it in a perspective you all can understand, but especially for fans of 1997's The Game, starring Michael Douglas. And the most amazing part of the lies is that it's genuinely hard to tell if some of them are purposeful lies or just dumb sh** he believes. Like, remember when he said you needed an ID to buy cereal? Something he's claimed multiple times? You know, if you go out and you wanna buy groceries, you need a picture on a card. You need ID. You go out and you wanna buy anything, you need ID and you need your picture. And was that just him spinning bullshit? Or is he just so disconnected from grocery shopping that he actually believes you get carded for buying food? Serious question, has he ever gone grocery shopping? Has he ever even eaten cereal before? Or are all of his breakfasts just handfuls of loose waffles crushed into wads by his balmy fingers, stuffed into his enraged kisser with a cocktail of Sudafed and Brain Force Plus while hunkered in his morning panic room, chilling with Jodie Foster. Man, I've been on a real Fincher kick lately. Also, this is gonna take forever if I spend this much time on every lie. So let's just shotgun a few of them, blast them into your face like you're a Corn Road Jared Leto in David Fincher's panic room. Starting from the very beginning of his campaign. Some highlights. Lying nonstop about his campaign opponents and drumming up lasting conspiracy theories about Hillary Clinton when there's plenty of real stuff to complain about. Saying that Obama wiretapped him because of a, uh, and I quote, little bit of a hunch. Or, much more hilariously, boosting a theory that Ted Cruz's father helped assassinate John F. Kennedy based on a story from the National Enquirer, triggering a newfound humiliation fetish in the senator and snowballing an apparent life of servitude. Anywho, Trump went on to, uh, you know, win, and then immediately lied about the crowd size of his inauguration, despite the entire nation having eyeballs. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration Period. Other lies about his election include, but aren't limited to, his insistence that he only lost the popular vote because three to five million people had voted illegally, despite that being not the truth. Opposite of the truth. One of his first presidential actions was to issue a travel ban, which, in a weird coincidence, specifically targeted Muslim countries. And like, they said it wasn't a ban, and Obama had done the same thing, and both of those things were, um, 
lies. And then the ban caused airport bottlenecks. The shitty racist president claimed that only 109 people were affected because of his actions, despite that number being closer to at least 60,000. Wait, that's, that's weird. We didn't have a graphic of Trump's tweet about it. I wonder why that is, it's so strange. Ah, geez, what are some more lies? Do we have any racist lies? And not something easy like birtherism or like the literal first thing he said when announcing his candidacy for president, which was, and I'm very lightly paraphrasing here, Mexico is sending us their rapists who are bringing drugs. We have to build a wall to keep them out. Huh, how could we have known? Anyway, let's watch him justify the travel ban and the wall by saying in front of Congress that foreigners are responsible for the majority of terrorism since 9-11. The vast majority of individuals convicted of terrorism and terrorism-related offenses since 9-11 came here from outside of our country. Except that, according to the Government Accountability Office, a government agency, it's right there in the name, his government agency, only 27% of extremist violence, as in acts of terrorism resulting in death, were from radical Islamists. Can you guess what the other 73% was caused by? I will give you a hint. It rhymes with, um, Dwight Lure X C. It's a hard rhyme, it was Nazis, or Nazi types, with the skin that tends to be white, you know? Point is, lies, and also racism. Gotta, gotta speed it up here, okay? It's hard to list the lies and also explain them as lies. So like, Google along. A lot of lies to get to, folks. Another fearmonger lie was that time he said that the murder rate in our country is the highest it's been in 47 years, when that is literally the opposite. Here's the FBI saying the opposite, and here's a graph. And if you need the nuance, what he's twisting is the true fact that there was a slight increase in crime, and that increase was the steepest in 45 years. But that's part of a larger decrease, like the, the line is going down and then ticked up slightly. And he's using that to lie. And then take credit for crime going down after he took office, even though it's just a larger pattern. And boy, does he love taking credit for things he didn't do, usually by lying about how bad things were before him. Like saying that an environmental regulation cost hundreds of thousands of jobs, a figure that seemed to have come out of thin air or falsely saying that the US has spent seven trillion in the Middle East when that number is actually from a study calculating the money we will spend. But hey, maybe we shouldn't be spending any trillions on blowing up foreign kids. So you know what? I will give him that one, except he still increases the military budget every year, so not really. Except also not because he's massively increased the number of drone strikes and deaths from drone strikes from other drone strike presidents and also made it so he and any other presidents don't have to say how many civilian deaths there are from those drone strikes. Also, he took credit for cutting $600 million from the F-35 program, but actually they were planning to cut costs before ever meeting with Trump. Oh, and he freaking loved taking credit for jobs, didn't he? Most often using company expansions that had literally nothing to do with him. He worked hard to keep a Ford Lincoln plant from moving from Kentucky to Mexico, despite the actual fact that they weren't planning to do that at all. And also, they don't make Lincolns in Kentucky. And that time ExxonMobil announced they were expanding jobs and Trump took a victory lap, despite the plan originating in 2013. Oh, hey, hey there, friend. Do you remember when he said he spent a lot of time with 9-11 first responders and that he was, quote, down there? And then the retired deputy chief with the New York Fire Department was like, uh, no, he wasn't. 9-11, of course, being that time there were thousands of Muslims cheering on rooftops. Weird how he keeps lying about Muslims. Okay. Ah, this, okay, it's only a section of the episode. We haven't even gotten to policy or crimes or existential terrors. Remember when he kept lying about Time Magazine wanting him to be person of the year? And then we learned that he had a Photoshop Time Magazine at his golf club? Like, he was weirdly obsessed with being person of the year, like some kind of sad boomer fantasy. Speaking of weird golf course lies, how about that fake Civil War memorial that was definitely fake, like he had a river of blood war memorial 
memorial with a quote credited to him at his golf course. And then historians were like, that definitely isn't a thing. He sharpied that hurricane map. Mexico will pay for the wall. Doctors are executing babies. The military is low on ammunition. Fucking what? What is it? Are we spending trillions or are we running out of ammo? He lied about his height. What is with these guys doing that? Windmills! If you have a windmill anywhere near your house, congratulations. Your house just went down 75% in value. And they say the noise causes cancer. You tell me that one, okay? You know, the thing makes it so... And of course, it's like a graveyard for birds. <sighs> Cody, you doing okay? Need a cold glass of egg or something? We haven't even talked about crimes or climate change or countless coronavirus lies that absolutely killed people. Like, the lies I've been covering are mostly lies we forgot because of bigger, more dangerous lies everyone knows about. And do we really need to talk about how he's called climate change a Chinese hoax, but privately recognizes that climate change is real? And so his lie there, one that will slow down progress to likely catastrophic results, is not out of ignorance, but flat out purposeful malfeasance, or how people have actually died from taking hydroxychloroquine, at least one of those deaths being directly related to Trump falsely toting it as a cure for coronavirus, or the mask stuff, downplaying the virus early on, ignoring warnings, f***ing directly giving the virus to other people, this mask thing, etc. and etc. and et to the ceteras where my etc. is at, a delicious smorgasbord of lies surrounding the Russia investigation, claiming to have never met people he clearly has met, entire genres of lies. I'm sure we've missed so many lies and could perhaps blast the screen with all the other lies right at this second. Maybe with a cool font like in those James Cameron movies I've heard about. But we need to move on. Because for the most part, this is just stuff Trump did with his mouth. Mouth stuff. Trump doing mouth stuff on us. Really going ass with his mouth. Imagine that. But also, and like, I guess way more importantly, He's also done a lot of crimes. Like, not just the one most recent crime that I'm sure happened while we were recording this episode, perhaps another treason or two, but other crimes too. So many that, once again, we can have genres of crimes. And this isn't counting his pre-presidential crimes, like, you know, rape, something that has its own extensive Wikipedia page. For the sake of brevity, I'm going to just remind you all of the crimes he did while in office. How do we do this? Alphabetically, but like deceptively so that we still control the order or like Letterman's top 10 list. Remember that? Let's do both. Starting with number 10, A, lot of emoluments clause violations. Oh yeah, that. The old Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8 of the United States Constitution that prevents any person holding office from accepting any gifts or profit from their position. A violation considered so severe that in 1810 they approved a currently unratified amendment, making any violation punishable by removing the citizenship of the individual in question. So yeah, kind of a, a biggie. Maybe we should, um... Make that amendment official. I don't know. This is an idea. Just, just a little brainstorm. You know, putting all the cards on the table and such. Or in this case, folders filled with obviously blank pieces of paper. Remember that? Remember when the President of the United States, in an effort to assure people he was going to divest from his many businesses, presented us all with a half-assed scattering of shoddy office props, like some kind of community theater production of Glen Gary Glen Ross? What kind of hilarious sociopath does that? The lazy hubris needed to not only pass off obviously blank paper, but also, um... Plant staff members into the audience to laugh and clap at his very good words. And just as we all knew he was going to do, our dear president proceeded to spend the next four years using his position to make money while nobody did anything about it. We just sort of watched it happen. Kinda hoping that perhaps the Democrats would maybe, I don't know, stop him. But instead, Trump immediately began referring to Mar-a-Lago as the Southern White House, specifically while hosting the Japanese Prime Minister at his private club during a summit in which he charged the United States government a total of $36,000 for just that one time. He charged three 
fucking dollars for glasses of water. Regular water, not like fancy $3 water where you soak $3 bills in the water to get that salty manhandled flavor. And he would go on to make millions in hotel and resort profits from taxpayer money spent on secret service and event catering, as well as GOP and corporate suck-ups using his properties like luxury wishing wells. Of course, we know and are apparently bored with all our taxpayer money going to that turd orange, but often do we forget all the weird corporate and political bribes just flowing into Trump Hotel. Like, hey, remember that time Trump approved a merger between Sprint and T-Mobile that would f over wireless customers? Like, even though they promised it would lead to 5G and more jobs, most people understood that it would actually raise prices and reduce competition. And after the merger went through, thanks to Trump, T-Mobile went back on all of their promises for innovation and job creation because it was, um, bad. And then we learned that also, you know, just as an aside, T-Mobile had spent $195,000 at Trump hotels since asking for the merger approval. So like, T-Mobile wanted to do a bad thing designed to hurt people, lied and said it would be good, and then spent almost $200,000 directly paying the president through his business he didn't divest from, resulting in that president approving the bad thing they wanted to do to people. In exchange, it seems, for money. Just a, a thing that happened that didn't end Trump's presidency. Nor did we blink after learning that his IRS chief earns $100,000 a year from renting out Trump properties, or the fact that he uses Mar-a-Lago for fundraising events, some of which feature videos of him shooting the logo for Black Lives Matter, a civil rights movement. Remember? Do you remember? And so he's essentially siphoning political funds from the GOP straight to his company, like some kind of, um, is grift, is it? Seems like the word for it. But of course, we're talking specifically about the emoluments clause, which is about foreign governments giving money to the president, which is also a thing he did, on a regular basis no less, to the surprise and action of no one. Foreign governments leasing out luxury condominiums at Trump Tower, making business deals with foreign companies to build golf courses in other foreign countries. He tried to host the G7 summit at his resort. He literally uses his position as the president of the United States to plug his fucking businesses to foreign leaders, spitting directly in the face of specifically Jimmy Carter and Jen Generally, the emoluments clause, a thing our founding fathers apparently considered to be a really serious offense. Also, plugging your businesses like that is just tacky, man. And on Twitter? Come on. It's weirdest tweets keep not showing up. I wonder what that's about. Anywho, I guess the Constitution is like vague or some junk, so we had a lot of problems actually punishing Trump for this, even though it's clearly not what anyone had in mind for how the presidency works. And like Jimmy Carter busting his nuts and so on and so on. And I guess the founding fathers who clearly wanted a harsh punishment for this once made Ben Franklin seek approval for a diamond snuff box from King Louis specifically because of this. But well, they didn't write it clear enough. So uh, jokes on them, right? The joke being that Trump used the office to make a total of $24,303,218 for his properties, specifically from being the president. Ha ha! Great joke. On the country. So much egg on our faces. Did someone say egg? Next crime! Number nine. But boy, he did terrible campaign violations. Okay, this is already too many bits on top of bits. I see that now, but whatever, we're pushing through it. So many crimes to get through, folks. Remember this thing? That Michael Cohen guy from forever ago, who in 2018 surrendered to the FBI on charges of, amongst many things, paying off women using campaign funds. Donald Trump's campaign funds. And those women being people Donald Trump had relationships with. You know, money to, um, to, to, to shush them, shush money. 
Oh, and he was Trump's lawyer at the time and said he was directed by Trump to do that thing. Important detail. And then we later found out that Trump's campaign had, in total, hid $170 million in spending that we know about. And while we couldn't technically link the president to the actual crime by his lawyer, who said the president told him to do it, everyone was kind of curious why we couldn't do something. Because why else would they be paying off hush money if not at the president's request? But whatever, I guess we just moved on. Or maybe not. Who can say? And frankly, it's wild that this is like the least important crime at this point. I'm so bored with the whole paying off incriminating people during his presidential run. Let's move on to number eight. Crap, look at all this abuse of power. Oh yeah, this is one of the hits right here. Had this shit right in the articles of impeachment. The, the first articles of impeachment. That's of course when our president asked the government of Ukraine to investigate a political rival in exchange for $400 million in military aid. And like, we have a lot of evidence and testimony saying that happened and direct links to his lawyer and uh, Trump literally confessing to it. But the GOP just threw it all out and said that he learned his lesson. Gee, I wonder how they feel about that decision now. And again, this is like the thing we all know about and is almost not worth recovering. That time he was impeached for major crimes. Old news, bro, whatever. Give me that underground corruption shit. You know, like how aside from the Ukraine quid pro quo, Trump was clearly doing this with his donors, awarding ambassador and government positions to rich people who gave to his campaign, which like a lot of things Trump does was not uncommon in politics, but he just does it more and worse and more obviously. One of those guys was of course that postmaster general guy, you know the guy, the one who f up the USPS right before the election while the president publicly admitted to wanting to f up the USPS to stop mail-in ballots. Just uh, a guy with power abusing that power constantly, pressuring the attorney general to investigate political rivals, using his Twitter and power to call a boycott over bad news coverage of him, using his Twitter to intimidate witnesses during his impeachment, his, his first impeachment. A lot of Twitter stuff, weird that we can't see his tweets anymore. I wonder I wonder what that's about. But, oh yeah, and attacking private citizens on Twitter. Then there's the general purge of officials deemed unloyal to the president, the firing of witnesses who testified against him, and of course, the presidential pardons of people who refused to rat him out. Terminal motherfuckers like Paul Manafort and Roger Stone and Cush Sr. And maybe also Trump himself, perhaps. And this specifically leads us to the next super fun crime we're having a great time. Number seven, darn, bribes. This kind of morphs into a lot of the other crimes. There's just so many crimes, it's a spectrum of crimes, but we really should just stand back for a second and like, take in how many bribes the president of the United States was involved in. Like, we already covered it, but his time in office began with the knowledge that he paid off a woman to cover up an affair. And there was a time where other politicians would impeach a president just for that. Like. No judgment here, if it's consenting adults and whatnot, but also Bill Clinton is a rapist, but also so is Trump. But you see how low the bar has gone, right? To the point that news like this story here, where the president might possibly be accepting money in exchange for giving out pardons to criminals, kind of got lost in the weeds. Because the weeds are, um, Already horrifying. The weeds include an entire impeachment where Trump was essentially bribing another country into investigating a political rival. The weeds are the fact that Trump's business is a lobbyist wet dream, allowing other countries like Saudi Arabia to rent out 500 rooms at Trump Hotel for, um, I'm sure very legitimate reasons. Or how Trump reportedly attempted to shut down the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, a law that prohibits companies from bribing foreign officials. Because hey, since all those foreign companies are bribing him, it only seems fair, right? Did I mention that he tried to bribe a foreign country to investigate a political rival? I did, but just for good measure. Number six. Everybody's talking about that quid pro quo. I seriously can't stress enough how we impeached the president for something he definitely did do before the GOP acquitted him for political purposes and said that he had learned his lesson. 
Like, I know that was a whole thing, but just to recall the deets and the tales, Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution specifically says that a president can be impeached for bribery. Bribery being legally defined as a quid pro quo. And while there were other crimes too, we got a clear picture from testimony of several ambassadors and officials being told by Trump to defer to Rudy Giuliani on matters involving Ukraine, despite Rudy having no official government positions besides being Trump's personal lawyer and in one brief moment, cybersecurity advisor. And at the time, old Fiddlepants said out loud, I'm asking them to do an investigation that they're doing already and that other people are telling them to stop and I'm going to give them reasons why they shouldn't stop it because that information will be very, very helpful to my client. Rudy also hired several criminals to go to Ukraine and pay people for dirt on the Bidens. One of those criminals would later say that Trump absolutely knew everything he was up to at the time. And like, there are pictures of them hanging out too. Seems damning. Also, those crime folk were making donations specifically attempting to push out an ambassador that Rudy and Trump didn't like. Also pretty damning. A little damning. A dab of damning. If damning stuff was like an old man's penis, this is the equivalent of reaching into the pants and kind of knocking it around a bit. We got a whole trial with testimony talking about how Trump was basically pushing officials out of Ukraine dealings and trying to replace them with his personal lawyer. And at the same time, we got Trump tweeting out all sorts of intimidation tactics at those witnesses. Oh, and that whole testimony where the one ambassador who was also a f***ing donor to Trump's campaign flat out said to a Ukraine official that he could get them a meeting with Trump only if they continued to investigate Biden. And it caused John stupid f***ing Bolton to straight up end the meeting right then and there. And all the ambassadors were texting each other like, this is f***ing wild. He's trying to get them to investigate Biden. And oh right, none of this includes how Trump withheld aid from Ukraine and then got on the phone with them and said he would put the aid back. But first, a direct quote, I would like you to do us a favor though. The favor being an investigation into Joe Biden's family. And geez, like they acquitted him, huh? Because despite evidence that Trump was directing them to go to Rudy, Trump claimed that his personal lawyer was acting alone, at least until he just flat out confessed after the fact. Was it strange to send Rudy Giuliani to Ukraine, your personal lawyer, are you sorry you did that? Not at all. Rudy was a great crime fighter. You know that may be better than anybody yeah. else. Because he uh, did it. He sent his personal lawyer to dig up dirt on a political rival, and at the same time rearranged U.S. diplomats to serve that personal purpose. Then he pulled aid and told the Ukrainian president he'd give it back if he did him a personal favor. And we proved most of that during the trial. And then the GOP acquitted him. And then Trump just brazenly admitted to the stuff he was previously denying. And then he kept being the president. It's weird, super weird stuff. Is, is weird the right word? Hold on. Dictionary.com, uh, Excruciating, that's the word that describes this thing that happened. Okay, cool. Hey, what letter are we up to in the alphabet? Number five, f***ing obstruction. Right, it's impeachment adjacent, but deserves its own letter slash number or whatever. Trump obstructed justice. It was the second article of the impeachment. Like the opening ban to the Ukraine headliner. That was specifically about ignoring subpoenas. But there was a whole other brand of Trump obstruction, like before that. The cool indie band playing down the street from the impeachment article opening for the Ukraine headliner. Just so many crimes, it's hard to keep them all in your head without contextualizing them as musical groups. I'm talking about all that Mueller bullshit. God, do you even remember that? Mueller gave us a whole list of ways that Trump was probably using his power to obstruct the Russia investigation, which totally isn't sus as f Do you even remember the Russia investigation? Like the one different than the Ukraine thing? Holy fucking cat Jesus. He fired Comey. You remember Comey? That useless drip. He fired him and he only learned he was fired from watching the TV. 
He fired him as he was investigating some kind of thing. Bet it was terrible. And before he fired him, he asked him to drop the investigation and demanded loyalty. And I guess they made a miniseries about it where he's Jeff Daniels. Bet that's a lot of fun. Don't you want to watch that right about now? The Jeff Daniels, James Comey miniseries that came out around the election? We have so much more to cover. Trump tried to talk Jeff Sessions out of recusing himself from that investigation. That's obstruction. He tried to fire Mueller through White House counsel Don McGahn and McGahn resigned instead. That's obstruction. He asked Flynn's lawyer for a heads up on anything that might incriminate him. That's obstruction. He f***ing called Michael Cohen a rat when he started to testify against him. You know, like a TV criminal might say. Did I mention how he fired all the people who testified against him during the impeachment? I feel like I might have, but I feel like saying it again. Let's move on before I literally explode. Number four, go, go gadget election help from Russia. Oh my God, that's right. That's what the Comey stuff was about. Boy, that brings me right back. Donald Trump Jr. meeting with Russian lobbyists at Trump Tower, specifically looking for dirt on Hillary Clinton, and then lying and saying it was about Russian child adoption before the story went public. And he had to change his story, as you would for a totally innocent and not illegal meeting. And Paul Manafort was there. There were damning emails about it. Paul Manafort went to jail. So did George Papadopoulos. You know, the Trump campaign advice advisors who were caught seeking dirt on Hillary Clinton from Russia, probably found through illegal means, but I'm sure it wasn't something Trump, who would later pardon Manafort, knew anything about. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. Oh, and Roger Stone, now pardoned, the longtime Trump and Nixon associate, was found guilty of, among several things, threatening witnesses in the Russia investigation that I'm sure Trump was totally innocent in. Hey, remember when Trump offered Julian Assange a pardon if he pretended that Russia wasn't involved in the WikiLeak DNC hacks? Innocent people stuff, that is. People without ties to Russia. These are the things they would do because there's nothing going on with that. This is all bringing me so far back. Oh my gosh, you know, like, 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 like when there was no disease and we were all excited about like, Game of Thrones, and the president had yet to rile sedition against a fair election, and was instead just desperately trying to cover up the fact that he sought personal political help from a foreign government that was specifically boosting his presidency to create discord in the US, and then, uh, accomplished that. You remember how Russia successfully tried to kill our democracy by helping to elect Donald Trump? Did you remember that? Ah, nostalgia. Well, joke's on them, because we didn't need their help to destroy our democracy. Ha ha! Number three, have a hot cup of advocating violence. You know, just to reiterate, there was no way to see it coming that Trump would build a base willing to act violently in accordance with his wishes. Or maybe, oh, I think it's the opposite. Hold on one, one second. It was the opposite where it was incredibly clear that Trump was building a conspiracy-driven mob of terrifying racists and sycophants somehow believing that a wealthy reality TV host was the second coming of Jesus, the man famous for living in gold towers. I mean, if you just remember his campaign rallies, he would frequently encourage violence against people who dared to speak up against him. There soon became an entire genre of Trump-inspired hate crimes that we just learned to live with. Here's a list of 52 incidents from 2015 to 2019 where violent actions were garnished with Trump slogans or statements of support. Remember Pipe Bomb Guy? The guy who specifically tried to murder people Trump didn't like? The time he called some Nazis very fine people and inspired America's most old to run for president. And when he tweeted, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, a phrase with a long ass history of inciting violence specifically against people of color. And then someone went out and shot people. How about when he told the police to treat suspects rougher? When he threatened a journalist with prison? Remember when he praised a guy for body slamming a reporter? The time he said he'd physically fight Black Lives Matter protesters? Which honestly, I'd kind of like to see him try. Or when he suggested shooting people crossing the border? Hey, remember when he was asked point blank to condemn white supremacists and instead told them to stand by? and we just kept on going. He just 
kept on being the president. Because you know, there was just no way of knowing this would escalate any further. How could we know that the president, who praised a group of supporters trying to run his opponent's bus off the road, would incite so much violence in the event of his election loss? Oh my God, we haven't even talked about the human rights violations yet. Like I know political violence is real in vogue right now because we're seeing years of Trump enabling coming to a climax, or at least hopefully this is the climax, but we must not forget all the human rights violations. Okay, let's talk about that for a while. Number two, I can't believe it's not basic human rights. I bet a lot of this is technically legal and stuff that other presidents did before Trump and will do after him. How do we even tackle this in a section of this video? Do I need a second top 10 list within this top 10 list? Can I blast the information directly into your head like in the movie Brain Scan? I know how you all love my Brain Scan references when talking about f***ing over civil liberties. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna shotgun this in no particular order. Everyone get ready. Arguing that trans rights are not protected by Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, revoking a rule disclosing civilian casualties from airstrikes, trying to revoke mercury limits on coal plants, Puerto Rico, just everything with Puerto Rico. Could have done a whole hour on Puerto Rico, but we have to keep moving to using cluster munitions despite being banned by over 100 other countries for disproportionately harming civilians, rolling back access to free birth control, pursuing the harshest penalties against drug offenses. He revoked the 24 fair pay and safe workplaces order designed to protect women in the workplace, also revoked an equal pay rule, or at least attempted to, rolling back regulations making healthcare more accessible to those with disabilities, repealing net neutrality I guess can count, and is a whole other video's worth of content, reversing protections on offshore drilling, deregulating sources of toxic air pollution, removing climate change information from government websites, withdrawing guidelines for campus sexual assaults, scaling back civil rights investigations for the education department, lifting a human rights condition to an arms sale to Baran. Keystone pipeline, that's a whole thing. F there's not enough time. Did we talk about the Muslim flight ban? I feel like we had that earlier, but there's no way of knowing. All I see is darkness and blood. Um, then there's the transgender bathroom stuff and just like so much f***ing over of trans people in the LGBTQ community. Again, several videos worth of that. Coal mining regulations, animal rights regulations, just flat out failing to report human rights abuses in general. They ended protections for Haitian refugees. Oh God, the immigration stuff. Ah, okay. Ah. Seeking to end due process rights for undocumented immigrants, making it easier to deport victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking, expanding the power to deny asylum to any immigrant who crosses illegally. Also, they're now just sending asylum seekers back to the places they're seeking asylum from while they work on their cases, uh, routinely forcing migrant children to take drugs and the cages. Of course, there's the cages. Days worth of talking about cages. Can't forget the cages, which admittedly were already there, and how they used those cages to, as a deterrent, separate thousands of kids from their parents and made the parents choose between getting their kids back and being deported to the place they were trying to escape and deported a bunch of families without their kids and still can't find a lot of the parents now and publicly said they are giving up on reuniting some of the kids because it's too hard and the people running the cages are, of course, buddies with Trump. And, <clears throat> and any reporter that covers any of this was put on a special government list. What else? Uh, Betsy DeVos saying that schools should be able to report undocumented students, you know, so they can be separated from their parents, put in cages, and lost in the system, which I guess is a kind of education? Denying visas to those who can't afford health care. Ah, I bet there are more that I miss. You know, all the ice stuff and COVID. Gosh, and COVID. Cody? Who is that? Cody, it's your grandma. Gigi, that's you? 
I just wanted to check in to see how my favorite grandson was doing. I'm kind of work, but this is very considerate of you. Are you getting enough protein, my boy? Have they been feeding you? Oh, you sound cranky. No, I'm fine. Just a little tense from Perhaps my... you need a good egg or two. No, thanks. I'm not hungry. Your grandma wants you to eat some eggs to get big and strong. Now do as your grandma says now. Grandma commands you. Is this not my grandma? Eat the f***ing eggs, Cody. I don't want to eat the eggs. But you promised to eat the eggs. Do you really want to break your promise? When did I promise to eat the eggs? Do not try to gaslight us, Cody. You know what you did. I'm pretty sure it's the opposite thing that's happening right now. If you don't eat those eggs, I swear on your Oh, you will regret it. I will make this the rest of your life. Do I have to eat them? Can't I just put them in my body some other way? You have one hour. Click. The sound of hanging up. I'm hanging up on you, but it's not on an actual phone. Okay, bye. I think maybe I'm in danger. Where were we? Oh, right. We were about to name the number one crime of former President Donald Trump in alphabetical order, which is... Treason! Right. The treason. That shouldn't come as a surprise, I guess. And perhaps for a moment, we should clarify that treason specifically means a crime that's punishable by either death or no less than five years in prison and a $10,000 fine. Because... I guess there's a spectrum of treason. Actually, that, that does make sense. Like, as much as we hate this old Trump fellow, he was probably on the light side of treason. At least in terms of this US Capitol jazz, sorry, uh, jizz. To the point that it's more likely to charge him with sedition instead. Sedition being advocating insurrection against the government with a punishment of 10 to 20 years, depending on if they'd be able to prove a conspiracy. Like, say, I don't know, if he had some kind of hilariously inept lawyer who helped him. And then to impeach him could, if convicted, disqualify him from ever holding office again, as well as trust or profit under the United States, which is specifically noted in the current impeachment papers, which passed. The difference being that treason is defined as levying war against the U.S. or in adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort, and is generally harder to nail people on. And with that said, Donald Trump committed treason. Maybe we can't prove that about him, like in court, but he definitely levied war against the U.S. Was he too dumb to do that successfully? Sure. But that was absolutely what he was trying to do right here. Let's have trial by combat! All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats, which is what they're doing, and stolen by the fake news media. That's what they've done and what they're doing. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. Our country has had enough. We will not take it anymore. And that's what this is all about. And to use a favorite term that all of you people really came up with, we will stop the steal. We have come to demand that Congress do the right thing and only count the electors who have been lawfully slated, lawfully slated. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Today, we will see whether Republicans stand strong for integrity of our elections, but whether or not they stand strong for our country. Our country. Our country has been under siege for a long time. So imagine if I told an entire crowd of people that Frankie Muniz was, at this very second, feasting on the supple flesh of little baby kittens. Delicious, delicious kittens. But we hate to see it, folks. We hate what Frankie Muniz is doing to those kittens right this second. And we should probably go to his house and 
peacefully protest as he eats those kittens right this moment inside that house. And also, I've been saying this, how Frankie Muniz is eating kittens for months now. And in fact, for years, I've been talking about all the terrible stuff Frankie Muniz has done, and sort of dodging every opportunity to denounce the people who have attacked Frankie Muniz on the street for eating kittens, and sharing videos of people clearly doing violence against Frankie Muniz, retweeting accounts of people who have been calling for the death of Frankie Muniz, Agent Cody Banks star Frankie Muniz. It would be extremely clear from years of me passively inciting violence against Frankie Muniz that telling a crowd of enraged Muniz-hating weirdos that he's currently eating kittens and everyone should go to his house was an attempt at dethroning this delightful former child star. And now, imagine that I was completely lying about the kitten eating. And in fact, knew that I was lying about it. The election part, not Muniz, that guy definitely eats kittens. But you get my point here, in the sense that Trump had spent four years building a violent mob, condoning violence, encouraging it, getting mad when asked to denounce his Nazi supporters, and then later, at another time, in his apology, calling white supremacists very fine people. Later telling the Proud Boys to stand by, telling the people storming the Capitol to overturn the election that they're very special, and we love them. He would have to be extremely stupid not to know what he was doing, which, okay, maybe. But that also wouldn't absolve him from the responsibility, from the fact that he got in front of a crowd who truly believed that the election was stolen from him, and then said shit like, I hope that our great vice president, our great vice president comes through for us, and if he doesn't come through, I won't like him quite as much. And then told that crowd to go to the place where Mike Pence was, along with all the Democrats he's accused of being a child molesting, election stealing cabal. And then the crowd got there shouting this. before breaking into the Capitol with flex cuffs and explosives and an albeit half-assed plan to kidnap and murder Trump's political opposition, AKA the United States government. That is the culmination of a four year long push for treason by Donald Trump earwig traitor president, who, before any of this happened, was still in the f***ing hot seat for a call in which he blatantly pressured Georgia election officials to cheat the election for him. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state, and flipping the state is a great testament to our country because, you know, there's, there's, there's just a, it's a testament that they can admit to a mistake or whatever you want to call it. If it was a mistake, I don't know. Do you remember that? The thing that should have gotten him impeached before this other thing that's gotten him impeached for a second time? On top of all the calls to violence, obstructing justice regarding an investigation into him working with Russia to win an election, using his presidency to profit off of foreign and corporate interests, and willfully building a mob of white supremacists and conspiracy theorists, feeding off wild lies, demonizing his opponents before sending that mob to the US Capitol. If that's not treason, then I don't know what the f treason is. Maybe it's it's a little legally foggy to prove. I don't know, man. But when you add everything up like this, it is truly ghastly to recall, to see the growing escalation that everyone paying attention was flat out warning would lead to some kind of a violent coup attempt. And so not only do we have to remove Trump, but all of the people who enabled him and pretended to not see what was happening and are currently feigning shock and trying to wash their hands of him. Whether or not Trump is simply so narcissistic that he isn't fully aware of what he's doing or very purposefully attempting a white supremacist fueled overthrow of the government, it's moot. Because either way, he should have been removed years ago. He should never have survived his first impeachment. He should have been impeached earlier for lots of other stuff. And the people who allowed that need to be behind bars. Not cool tiki bars, but the jail kind of bars, to be clear. Of all the things to storm the US Capitol about, it's so 
fucking surprising that it wasn't the people who've spent the last four years watching terrible cowards stand by and let a racist, sociopathic, sleazy, lying grifter slowly erode the country during a pandemic. And instead, it's the violent, dumb f mob of ignorant and entitled assholes demanding to live under authoritarian rule. What a fucking embarrassment. And now for the lighter side of Trump. Wait, that's that's the transition we prepared. Okay. Look, if you don't like it, maybe you could eat a few eggs in protest. I'm not eating eggs. I'm not eating eggs. I'm not eating eggs. I'm not eating eggs. I'm not. And now for the lighter side of Trump. It's actually something we've been wanting to do a video about, but never really got around to it. And I guess the clock is ticking. Now, we're not about to tell you any good thing about Trump as a president, or attempt to sympathize with him, or defend him in any way. I just wanna make that clear. But if we had to find a sort of positive aspect to the man, and it's not really positive so much as interesting, it's that Donald Trump is just such a living, breathing, dead Kennedy's album cover. And to be a White House photographer in the last four years must have been an absolute treat. He has, as you all certainly know by now, murdered the concept of parody. Nobody speaks like him. And if you look at him without context, which you should never do, but when removed, He's absolutely the funniest f***ing president ever. Assuming his power ends here and now and America somehow recovers, we will be ironically using his speech patterns and phrases in casual conversations for decades to come. Many people are saying this about him. Like, the man once stared directly into a solar eclipse while his staffer yelled at him not to. while the first lady just stood there, expressionless, like freaking Wednesday Adams. That's incredible. He got on Air Force One with toilet paper stuck to his shoe, like a Leslie Nielsen character. I'm not one for body shaming here, but he's the most powerful person in the world and couldn't seem to grasp the hair and makeup needed to half-ass an imagined vitality he so desperately tried to conjure. Like, while all the knocks at his appearance you often see from liberal Twitter usually just end up being cruel and petty and hypocritical, there's something fascinating about the attempts to make him seem overly powerful or sexy when he's, you know, he's just an old guy. He dances like a school chaperone. He stands like he has no knees. He has resting toddler face. Again, whatever. It all kind of seems like a dull afterthought from the trees and stuff, but I just like to take a moment to really showcase the seemingly purposeful Banksy level art that Donald Trump has given us. Fade to black, please. As we walk very strongly down these halls We have all the best memories like this and this Remember this, remember this, remember that And this 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 Remember this, remember this Remember this, remember this. No one has the memories like me. Touching stuff. Folks, we're almost done, I swear it. Not talking about Trump, of course, but just this specific video. This is by no means a glib eulogy for Trumpism, because it isn't dead. And while we're hoping to focus on the next president and Democrats, maybe another nut episode, I've still got this thing lying around, there's surely going to be more violence in the name of Trump. More ghoulish grifters praising his name, more people trying to harness the stupid American fascism that's always festered and took center stage with Donald Trump. More enablers and apologists getting away with it and being taken seriously. More using not being Trump as the bar for acceptable and more of Trump himself, especially if the next year turns into a series of legal battles for him. And I guess you might be wondering, when exactly do we get to stop thinking about Donald Trump? I get it. You've had to ingest him every fucking day. And while that's doable in little doses, the more you keep gobbling him up, the sicker you get. It's like, 
It's like a lot of things. And the answer to that is actually simple to at least sum up, which is that we can stop thinking about Donald Trump when the problems that caused him are fixed. In other words, it's gonna be a while. We're not even sure what all the problems are, right? Like there's obviously the entire GOP, wealth inequality and division, Nazis, grifters, gerrymandering, the electoral college, and even more distressing, there's the fact that after a botched pandemic response, overall incompetence, blinding racism, and all the other stuff I've said in this video, 74 million Americans still voted for him. And from the exit polls, we know that the majority of those people were white, male, evangelical, higher income conservatives who didn't attend college. You can take any part of that and conclude what you want, I guess, but when you look at the people, mostly white men, some of which were off-duty cops who stormed the US Capitol, literally smearing their poo on the walls and seeking out kidnappings and executions, beating a cop to death for this guy, and how they all just tried to go home like nothing had happened. Just, just, just went back to their hotels and airports. They didn't wear masks, had their phones on them, and even wore the f***ing badges of places they worked. They posted for pictures and put them on social media, and are now being defended by the same crowds who acted like kneeling for the national anthem was the worst of sins, who have zero tolerance for looting when associated with a certain darker skin hue, and all for this guy? All in the name of a man so transparently disingenuous that he hugs American flags to show his patriotism while secretly calling dead soldiers suckers. Yeah, remember all that soldier stuff? Well, it all kind of points to a major, major dysfunction among entitled white men in this country that we've spent the last 200 plus years cultivating an environment that sugarcoats historical atrocities, idolizes monsters, favoring a single sex and race in the workplace, and media and society in general, shunning the different or unique, cruel towards the weak or inconvenient, building a system designed to reward the powerful and immoral and shame the poor and disenfranchised for not miraculously saving themselves, all culminating to a group of easily duped narcissistic honkies thinking that they can just casually attempt a fascist coup in the stupidest and most brazen way possible thinking that a guy who spent most of his life as a villain and reality TV host is somehow the best choice to run the country and will overturn democracy to help him. Like, wow, that's a problem. The realization that a large chunk of Americans are no smarter than the over-exaggerated cartoon mobs you see in episodes of South Park or The Simpsons. And of course, the fact that if you're a person of color or a member of the LGBTQ community, it's very likely that none of this is a revelation to you at all. What a f***ing problem this is. One that is ingrained in the country and quite frankly is going to take a major overhaul to fix. We need so many things to happen. Money out of politics, police demilitarization and reform and defunding, education spending, Medicare that's like, I don't know, for all of the people. More than two viable parties and a bunch of other things. Like, all the things. Our government is bad. And something like this was always in the cards. But for this dude? Sad. Weak. But maybe we don't need a violent coup. Our government is like an old house that has been neglected for decades. It's no longer enough to just fix a leak. We have to gut the entire plumbing, swap out the foundations, and f***ing purge the goddamn earwigs. So no, we're not going to stop talking about Donald Trump for a while, because Donald Trump is a racist fascist, as is also, apparently, a lot of America. And again, this is just one of the problems, probably the most pressing, but also another lesson that we simply cannot miss from this, which is at least a little more manageable, is that America needs a way better early warning system for authoritarianism. If Trump was a shoplifter, this is the equivalent of him making it out of the store with 10 flat screen TVs before anyone stepped in to do something. And if that happened at your shop, you would fire everyone who worked there. Which is why we can't just punish Trump, but all of the people who stood by. 
This needs to be an example made and a promise to build a system that actually holds brazen abuses of power responsible. Heck, maybe we shouldn't have presidents because every new second that Trump remains in power, much like the previous seconds, has been a colossal failure in our system. Presidents can just do whatever they want. That's not very good. Like, hey you, did you know that in the next week, Donald Trump, the guy who was just impeached a second time for inciting insurrection against the United States, will be the president during five federal executions. This breaks a 130 year tradition of halting executions during a presidential transition. <laughs> it's fun to try new things, right? And Trump has, just since July, overseen 13 federal executions of prisoners. And to put this into terrifying perspective, before Trump, there were only three federal executions since the 1980s. And so along with the millions dead from COVID or hate crimes or overseas bombings or all the other stuff, here are just a handful more of lives snuffed out by the guy who thinks that exercise depletes your body's life energy. Holy actual God, I need a long nap, you guys. I haven't even talked about the lasting effects of Trump, the foreign relationships he soured, the environmental screwing that can't be fully reversed. Don't forget the nukes. Oh. Hi, Mr. Egg. Are you from the drugs I put in my wine? No, I'm a new character, I guess. Cool, cool. So, about the nukes, do we really have to pile that on the worry list? I mean, Nancy Pelosi just spoke with the Joint Chiefs of Staff to make sure that Trump can't just press the no-no button and kill everyone, which... Is that a coup, kind of? I... It's not about Trump pressing the nuclear button, but the way he's slowly chipped away at the protective layers of international diplomacy, the thin shell that keeps the fragile, gooey center of humanity from spilling out and making a big mess. Like an egg? That's offensive. Don't you mean of eggsive? F you, man. This is serious. Trump pulled out of the 1992 Open Skies Treaty with Russia, which allowed both the U.S. and Russia to conduct unarmed observation flights of each other's military. That transparency now lost. Not to mention pulling out of the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty with Russia, which he did in 2018. The INF Treaty banned intermediate-ranged land-based ballistic missiles and cruise missiles and missile launchers. And immediately after the Trump administration pulled out of the treaty, the U.S., immediately tested an intermediate-ranged missile, likely triggering an arms race with Russia. Trump has also been steadily increasing provocations with China, sending U.S. naval ships through the Taiwan Strait, risking escalation towards an armed confrontation with China. Who have nukes? Boy, that is a lot to take in from an egg. You know what else is a lot to take in from an egg? 100 eggs! Ha! <laughs> I bet you can't eat 100 of us, Cody. You're too soft. And unless you eat me and my 99 brothers and sisters, then we'll never go away. Hold on. Yes, sir, we eggs are here to stay. Just like Trump will never go away. Unless you eat us raw. It's gotta be raw, Cody. Katie, why? Why? Come on, man, just eat the eggs for America. What is with you and the eggs? Are you trying to get rid of evidence? Do the eggs symbolize an important lesson for the episode? Are you just trying to murder me for like insurance purposes? Did I offend you in some way? Or is it just random cruelty? Look, man, I just need some kind of catharsis, okay? It's been a hundred episodes, and God knows how many of those were about Trump. And now, with everything that's happened, it just it feels like we can finally close a chapter. You know? By eating eggs. God, we didn't even talk about his golfing yet. There's just so much. There's just so much. He's apparently spent nearly a quarter of his presidency golfing. He somehow managed to incite an attempted coup and still golf all the time. I guess it's pretty great that the PGA has pulled their championship from his resort. Which he's reportedly much more upset about than the impeachment. Of course he is. Of course he is. There's just... So much. So much darkness. But hey, we're alive. 
right? Yeah, and that's pretty true. And it seems like while, yes, there is still a lot to do, at least Trump won't literally be the guy in charge anymore. And the coup failed. And everybody knows that it was a coup attempt. And it was the MAGA people very clearly doing it, egged on by Trump and by members of Congress. And so the GOP can't avoid what Trump is anymore. They bet on Trump and he lost. And that's good. I guess there's a sort of I told you so pleasure to be squeezed out, sure. Maybe a lesson learned, but probably not that. And the Democrats now have nearly full control, which is like, you know, inching towards good. And so in many ways, I don't know, this feels like a very positive transition for our 100th episode, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. And we're healthy, right? We're doing okay, you know, and we've got all these eggs and supporters, And progressive ideals are on the up and up. And eggs, there's always so many eggs. And it just seems, I don't know, it seems like things are finally starting to turn around. It seems like we can finally be a little egg-sided. Don't you think? Happy 100th episode, everybody. Kukukachu. Eggman. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching till the end. I hope you did, because otherwise, oh boy. Uh, like and subscribe and check out our Patreon. And we've got a podcast called Even More News. And I'm going to go brush my teeth.